Here we have highlighted in red some of the joints an EMT may have to immobilize. The EMT takes appropriate body substance isolation precautions. This includes gloves and eye protection. The EMT will direct his or her partner to maintain manual stabilization of the injured extremity. The EMT then assesses for circulation, motor function, and sensation distal to the injury. Circulation can be assessed by palpating a distal pulse or capillary refill time. Motor function can be assessed by having the patient move his or her fingers or toes on the injured extremity. Sensations can be assessed by touching a finger or toe distal to the injury and asking the patient which digit the EMT is touching. The EMT will then select the proper splinting materials to immobilize the injured joint. We will be using a rigid splint and triangular bandages. The EMT will then measure the splint on the uninjured extremity. The EMT then properly applies the splint, securing the long bone above and below the injured joint while eliminating excessive movement. By applying a splint near the elbow and farther up the humerus, the elbow will be properly splinted to the patient's body to reduce excessive movement during transport. By securing the wrist slightly higher than the elbow, swelling will be less likely to develop in the patient's wrist and hand. You will see two swaths being used here to secure the patient's humerus to the body. The entire injured extremity is now immobilized. Before splinting is complete, the EMT will ensure circulation, motor function, and sensation distal to the injury are present. Proper immobilization can prevent tissue damage and provide pain relief to the patient.